Ever seen the thermite reaction? If not, what it is is a mixture of aluminium, uh, a metal oxide of some description, and a little bit of heat. Now, it's quite a powerful reaction. So what you normally do is put a fuse. And a really good fuse is potassium permanganate and glycerol. So when you drop the glycerol on the potassium permanganate, the permanganate burns the glycerol, adds a little bit of heat to it, and the reaction gets going. But it looks just like this. Okay, time for me to get out of here. So thermite's not going to spontaneously explode, it's classed as a secondary explosive like tannerite. The individual components are perfectly harmless, once you've mixed them together you need to get the heat in there for something to start happening. So the little bit of heat creates more heat, more reaction, even more heat, even more reaction. It needs to go in there in the first place or just nothing will happen. And of course that is the same with these. These are just perfectly safe unless you get a bit of heat in there. If you get a bit of heat in there, then there is a chance of a thermal runaway. Now, there are three ways to get heat in here. That's thermally, turn a blowtorch on it, mechanically, puncture it, or electrochemically. If you charge something too quickly, it'll get warm. If you charge it excessively too quickly, it'll get hot. And the same with discharge, because they're electrochemical reactions and they give out heat. So you electrochemically, thermally or mechanically, will get enough heat in here. When I say mechanically, it's actually a short circuit. If you put a nail through there, you'll short circuit it. And if you've ever held a copper wire across a lead acid battery, that gets really hot, just like a heating wire, and will melt. The same thing happens here, we'll get sh uh, heat into it. Now obviously to guard against that, what you can do is if there is going to be heat going into it, take the heat away. And that is why when you have a big chunk of these, like in a car, it's why these things are in a big massive steel box and have cooling associated with them to prevent the heat going in or to take any heat away. Now to get these to thermally run away, we just have to do one of those three things. So one of the easiest ways of adding a little bit of heat to this and to get it to go into thermal runaway is to short circuit it. And a great way to short circuit it is to puncture it. So we're going to stick a nail through it. Get the nail in there. I've got a little bit of blue tack. We'll put a nail in that. Then when I hit that with a hammer, it should puncture. Then it should short circuit. Short, 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 short. Short circuit. <laughs> okay, that was a single nail on a discharged pack, and that was a whole lot of disappointment. I mean, that was a whole lot of nothing. Let's try a charged one. Another huge disappointment. I mean, it smelt a little bit. Hey, that was fully charged, single nail put through it, but not that impressive, eh? Yeah, but man, I had to put a bloody blowtorch on it. But that wasn't going up easily. Three nails and a blowtorch, and we finally got it to do something. 
So we began this with a thermite reaction for a very good reason. A thermite reaction obviously is aluminium, metal oxide and heat. And in video 1273 we took these apart and we saw that inside they had aluminium, uh, metal oxide and we provided heat, hoping to get a thermal runaway. The thermal runaway is that condition where your reaction creates a bit of heat, gets more of a reaction, so more heat, and it spirals until you get a blazing inferno. So that's why we began with them. Now, a lot of people worry about these things. They think that if you look at them funny, they'll burst into a fireball. Turns out, as you just saw, it actually takes a huge amount of abuse to get these to do anything. And I've seen a couple of videos where people have been trying to get these into uh, runaway conditions, including uh, heating it and overcharging it, uh, and they have to take a lot of time and a lot of trouble to make these do anything. Now these were made in 2016-2017, so they're relatively old batteries. They were fully charged when I did the final version of it, uh, and there's always going to be a balance of these things, isn't there? It's one of those things that uh, if you work with it with a degree of sensibleness, then you're going to be okay, absolutely nothing's going to happen to you. If you are crazy and you chuck these onto a huge bonfire at several tons at a time, you're probably going to be in a lot of trouble. But balancing everything really is the answer. So these don't need individual control. Thermal runaway is a possibility, but it's not something you particularly need to lose sleep about when taking one of these and sticking it in a clock. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please like and subscribe.